We do have the retail sales data in the U.S., and there's reason for optimism when we take a look at it. Benjamin Tao is a Deputy Chief Economist at CIBC Capital Markets. Uh, and Benny, it's, it's always good to take a look at the good news. Um, we know that this could be short-lived, but tell me your impression of what we see in retail sales. Yeah, relatively strong, better than expected uh, during the course of May and June, up 25 percent. I'll take it. That's good. Clearly, a lot of pent-up demand, uh, but we see even better news uh, because, listen, this is June. We are in mid-July. This is really old news, given how quickly things change. So what I'm trying to do now is to follow high-frequency data to get a sense of what's happening now, because all the comments about the June number, they said, yes, it's great. However, since then, uh, the U.S. Uh, is uh, facing another wave or the continuation of the first wave. They're shutting down. So maybe that will have an impact on the July number. So if you look at the July numbers, you actually see that uh, as of basically two days ago, they are still rising, and that's a good thing, which means that the momentum continues into July, despite what we are seeing in the U.S. as far as the virus is concerned. One of the big concerns, um, Benny, has been the withdrawal of government support for that U.S. consumer, uh, right? Where people talk about the fiscal cliff coming in July. When would you expect to see that show up in the data? Would that be an August or September problem? Yes, that will be mostly mid-August, September issue, when I believe that we will start slowing down. Many things will start happening. The you know, pent-up demand the wave will disappear. The summer will come to an end, and then you will have the money issue that will not be there. That's why I expect September, October, November to be relatively weak. So what we are seeing now is really the honeymoon period, quite frankly. So when we take that and we, we try to figure out the pace of reopening against what we've seen on the pandemic data in the U.S., would we expect hiccups? Or can we actually say, and I guess one of the reasons we want to do this is to figure out what it might mean in Canada as businesses get back to work. Are people really rushing back and spending in much more normal ways than the worst case scenario had predicted? Absolutely. If you look at what the Bank of Canada put together in um, April, they had the higher... Um, line and a lawyer line, basically best case scenario, worst case scenario. If you look at the numbers to date, the job market numbers, retail sales, uh, even manufacturing, construction, it's basically at the upper end of this forecast, basically better than expected. So that's something that they will continue probably into July, I think August as well. And especially in Canada, where SERB will be available, where subsidies will be available until December, that will continue. The issue will be the fourth quarter, and that will not be money, that will not be even jobs, it will be really the virus. We talked to the Bank of Canada governor yesterday, uh, Benny, and, you know, as we heard, the, the bank was signaling pretty clearly rates are going to be low for a long time and they're going to be low until the economy gets back to full recovery. They're not going to try to get in front of anything. Um, I, I want to play a clip for you here because I asked uh, Tiff Macklem, is he worried about household indebtedness in Canada? Have a listen. You know, right now... You know the most important thing is is to support recovery and get people back to work the best predictor of whether somebody is going to pay their mortgage is whether they have a job and so uh, yes there are high high household indebtedness is a vulnerability but uh, supporting the recovery and reducing that vulnerability are uh, entirely aligned so, I mean, do you, Benny, we were worried for you know, a year or two before this pandemic began about the rising level of debt indebtedness. Uh, it's logical for people to take on debt when rates are low. Now the central bank is saying they're going to be low for a very long time. Uh, how much worry, more worried do we need to be about people getting in over their head? Yes, uh, clearly it's not optimal, but I think he's absolutely right about not worrying too much about uh, the level of debt and people take too much debt. Remember, uh, we are going to recover into some sort of recessionary territory. The unemployment rate will remain elevated at about 7 8 percent, falling from 13 percent, but still 7 8 percent, something that we usually see in a recession. And if you look at <clears throat> previous recessions, and even in uh, 2015, when uh, the economy went down and interest rates went down, the level of debt actually went down, or the rate of growth of the level of debt went down. I expect the same mm -hmm. here. So <clears throat> the fact that interest rates are low does not mean that people will go crazy uh, with borrowing, and there will be a supply issues. Uh, banks will not be <clears throat> as willing to lend, given higher delinquency rates. 
I want to talk about something that will affect a lot of people, um, and that is the uh, the rental situation in the GTA. We've talked in recent years, the issue has been, Benny, one of supply and demand, not enough rental units. Uh, and so the price of rental units were higher than we would hope for affordability. We're seeing a bit of a reversal there. What do you make of the trend that's going on? Yes, uh, until recently, <clears throat> we said, listen, the rental market will slow down. This was a prediction. Now it's a reality. The rental market in the GTA and other centers, quite frankly, um, slowing down notably because one, demand is not there. Soon we are going to feel the impact of uh, reduced immigration. That would be another factor because of their high propensity to rent. And supply of condos and um, purpose-built apartments is basically at a record high. So you have a lot of supply and reduce demand, Economics 101 will tell you rent inflation will slow down. In, fi in fact, rent is going down. It's negative, and vacancy rates are rising, something that we haven't seen in this market for a long period of time. It was a very, very tight market. Night is slowing down. Maybe mm -hmm. it's a good thing, but we have to get used to a situation in which this market for the next year will be relatively soft. So good thing for renters, of course, but from an economic point of view, is it is it better for the kind of the economy in aggregate that that market be stronger? Is a soft market there something to worry about? Yes, a soft market means that something is not functioning and demand is not there while supply is there. And you see that the demand mm -hmm. is actually a slowing in a, the more expensive segment of the market, especially, for example, uh, the old uh, Toronto uh, city. So we have a situation in which uh, clearly it's a reflection of demand, not just supply. And in this environment, um, developers are stuck with increase in inventories. Not a good story, economically speaking, clearly good news for renters. We've talked about immigration in the past, Benny, and the extent to which that really was a boon to our economic growth uh, last year. We expect that to be a very different picture now. And this is the kind of market, of course, that's very directly influenced by that. Um, are you concerned about falling immigration in Canada? Yes, I am concerned. We're talking about 350,000 people. Add to it another 100,000 non-permanent immigrants. Clearly a factor that will have a negative impact. But Amanda, you know, from a long-term perspective, I think that the demographic story is going to be positive, not negative, due to this virus. And the reason is that the brain drainers that are not leaving Canada, 100,000 people every year move from, the, from Canada to the U.S., that's not going to happen anytime soon. In fact, I think that from a long-term perspective, given the fact that working from home will become mainstream, many of them will be working for the a U.S. company from Canada, reducing the negative impact coming from immigration, which will be temporary by nature. By 2022, we will go back to the previous quota, I think. All right, Benjamin Tal, always great to have you with us. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Benny Tal is Deputy Chief Economist at CIBC Capital Markets.